Hey guys, oh my gosh, I feel like it's been so long since I made a video. Like, has it really been that long? I feel like I posted one last week, I can't remember. It's been kind of hectic. So, let me adjust the light. Okay. So, this week, we started Family Medicine. Um, but before I go into that, I'm gonna backtrack and talk about internal med which I had last week so internal med was really cool we were at a different hospital and the doctor that we had was really chill now sometimes you kind of get uh, sometimes you kind of feel guilty when your doctor has a chill schedule because you always feel like you need to be on the go and it's like no in those moments where you have time off go study like literally go study go to the gym take care of yourself like those are the moments they take advantage of. So um, every day we would interview the patients separately. There was a group of three of us. And then we would present our findings to our attending. And that was really cool. Um, it was still a challenge for me, believe it or not, even though um, you know I speak Spanish because there are many dialects and many different types of slang that some patients will use where I have to kind of, you know, use context clues and just reaffirm with them just to make sure I get what they're saying. But I would say that my understanding of the dialect here in Miami has dramatically improved from day one. Um, day one, I had the other dialects that I had learned in school down packed, like the South American one, the Mexican one, and um, you know, my Cuban Spanish is improving, so I'm happy to say that. Honestly, I think this is a great setting because every weekend I have so many options of what to do to kind of like take my mind off of clinicals and relax, because you really do need to relax. Um, you can't study 24 seven or you'll go crazy and you'll get burnt out. So I've been checking out, um, some of the nightclubs, but I really, I'm that type of person that really likes museums. Museums, sightseeing, like, I'm just weird like that. You know, most of the time for people my age, people who mention like, oh, you know, what do you wanna do? And if I say like, oh, how about a museum? I'm gonna get some looks like, huh, no really, what do you wanna do? So like legit, I could spend like Saturday morning, afternoon, all day, at a museum just looking at the artwork um, or you know taking a historic tour around the city and like learning about that place um, I studied anthropology in undergrad so that kind of explains a little bit of my interest in people and things so I still haven't checked out the um, art deco area but I'm gonna try to go there if not this weekend the following weekend and you know obviously we have to think about being on call and all that so luckily these first three weeks I won't be on call but there is so much going on here like tomorrow the weekend is coming um, last week well, on Saturday I went to see DJ Mustard at Story and I think YG was there too uh, who else came oh yeah Karuchi but the thing is right like they announced that Karushi Tram was coming. That's it. For those of you who don't know her, that's Chris Brown's ex-girlfriend after Rihanna. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's kind of like a, well now she's an actress, but she's kind of like a, how would I say this? I would just say a public figure. You know, so like when you invite a public figure for a club appearance, it's like, okay, what are they gonna do? Cause she doesn't sing, not that I know of. She doesn't dance. So she's basically gonna be just at a VIP table and you can't get to her. And so I just didn't go that night. I think I just like went to sleep earlier, like caught up in my shows. Friday, I couldn't get out of bed. Like I took a nap at, what time was it? Like 5 p.m. And I did not wake up until 11 p.m. <laughs> like my mom called, she's like, oh, why haven't we heard from you? You know how like for my African people out there, your parents will always call you and find out where you are, like at any given time, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., like quarterly they'll call and try to find out where you are because like they think like the worst has happened. So 
yeah i was like oh yeah i'm just like literally in my bed which is probably like every um african parents dream to hear that you're not out in the world a dangerous world like you're actually like in bed not doing anything so that was me last week but yeah i mean today was a little bit overwhelming because we just jumped into lecture and jumped into everything about this rotation which i'm excited for and i think when it comes to situations like this, the more prepared you are, the less stressful it's gonna be. So if you go into every day knowing exactly what you wanna do, exactly what you're gonna say, and how you're gonna approach the pace, uh, the patients, it's not gonna be difficult at all and it makes it so much more easier and it makes you look so much better in front of your attending. So that's really it. Like, And then each rotation is just changing the subject matter. But at the end of the day, everything is all incorporated because medicine is just a revolving door. No matter if you're an OB, no matter if you're in peds, like you're gonna be talking about the same topics in each rotation. We have a little rule, a little stickler rule that you can't have colored nails. And I'm like, oh, look at these, look at these nails, they're so cute. And it's like, dang, maybe, like you, ha you have to do like pale or, you know, clear. And I'm like, dang, our schedule is already, you know, hectic. Basically, you just stripped down individually into the physician. But it's crazy because it's like in the process, yes, we have to do that. But at residency time, they want to know what sets you apart, what makes you different. So they didn't say anything about colored lipstick. So I'm going to keep wearing this colored lipstick. But, um,. Yeah, to, uh, real talk, the rule has been there. It's just that this weekend I just really wanted to do purple and I'll take it off. But oh, look at this. Like, it's just, I'm not really like a huge, huge, huge Halloween person. But when I look at these nails, it makes me think of Halloween. So in other rambling news, you know, this Sunday I went to church. And now when I, when I don't feel like waking up early, I'll go to the... 1 p.m. Spanish mass and that's also a great way for me to practice speaking Spanish um, and listening to Spanish actually like I really don't have a problem speaking it but listening and understanding word for word um, that's what I need to hear more of you know because it's been a while like even though I I do know it but I like in the islands I don't speak Spanish back when I was at home studying for step I wasn't speaking Spanish and I don't watch my telenovelas anymore. So, you know, it, it helps to like hear the mass in Spanish and like the Catholic um, books, like basically it has the uh, mass order in English and Spanish next to each other. So like if there's any word or phrase that I'm like forgetting what that means, I'll just look over to the other page and see that. So. It's crazy because even though you're in church in a different language, you still get that same spiritual feeling and it's amazing. But this Sunday I was just thinking like, I'm in the season that I was waiting for for a long time and I'm so grateful for that. And I hope that if any of you recently got into the season that you've been waiting for, whether it's um, work, school, relationships, health-wise, just stop and be grateful for that season because we know how things change. I know that once you get on a high, it doesn't stay there. Once you get on a low, it doesn't stay there. No condition is permanent. So you really need to take time and be grateful and don't take for granted those times when you enter into that season that you've been waiting for because it can just be gone in a second, any day, and it's never guaranteed. So. I feel like this is the most grateful in my life I've ever been because I prayed so long for things to work out like, like my especially anybody will tell you that you know if you're a medical student and you are a believer in whatever faith your faith is gonna get stronger in medical school that was quite the understatement like 
every semester I pray for things to go right. But when it comes to like your board exams, oh man, I prayed, I fasted, I did whatever it took. And that was like the most, I guess the, the biggest spiritual effort I've ever made. So then to like have those prayers answered and you're finally there, it's like, okay, every day I'm checking myself like, am I living this to the fullest? Am I doing everything I need to do to show God that I'm grateful for where I am? And am I offering advice to people who ask me for advice? Because a lot of people started asking me for advice when they, you know, heard I started clinicals and I'm so happy to answer because trust me when I needed help I did ask some people some people were more willing than others to um, give me advice and give me help so I want to be that person who can offer whatever I can I don't have all the answers none of us do but I'm willing to offer what I can when it comes to advice and when it comes to information so yeah, that was just something that I was reflecting on this weekend. And I don't think I've ever thanked God so much either. Like I'm talking about every day and maybe it's a maturity thing or maybe it's a faith thing or a combination of both, but like literally every day, like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. Thank God. You know, I don't know if you ever had such a blessing before and it's something that just happens that just seems to happen so easily and so naturally for other people and you know I feel like it made it more meaningful to me that I had to work so hard to get to where I am uh, because you know in, in school I've always been um, a bright student and what have you but I always had to work my butt off you know like after high school I had to work my butt off because after high school memorization no longer served a purpose like you had to know your stuff and it really comes down to knowing how to s properly study that's really what it is and that changes from college to med school so that's that's what i'll say about that i don't know if anybody um watched my latest snaps or instagram um comment if you want to follow me on snapchat but But, um, so I'm going to give a little review on Club Story. Now, that's really the only nightclub I've been to here. I went to, um, some type of bar type place in Wynwood. And I don't know if you could consider it a, consider it a nightclub because people were, like, dancing, like, as if they were in a nightclub. But, um... It's not like a fancy one. It's not like an indoors, I think it's like an outdoor type thing. So Story is very, it seems very exclusive to me compared to the clubs back in Philly um, because you either have to get a ticket in advance or pay a lot at the door. So, or like no people, no promoters and stuff. So, and I think it's similar to that in like New York and DC. But like when I went to see French Montana, um, I think it was like $30 ticket, but we bought it the night before. So that day at the club, you just show them your ticket and you get to skip the line pretty much. But then at the door, it was $60. So like you can save 30 bucks or like a good amount if you buy your ticket in advance. Um, if you don't have tickets and you're waiting for a promoter, it could take a while. And they tend to be picky on like the shoes that you wear. So ladies like try to wear heels guys get the short end of the stick because they're not going to let guys in for free like you have to at least not that i've seen like you have to really be ready to pay guys because miami is a city that favors females when it comes to nightlife um one thing i really hate about the club how it operates is i always feel like i'm in the way when, when it comes to being downstairs like the bouncers they're always pushing you somewhere like i feel like there's probably like pictures being taken of you know everyone clubbing or whatever and they just want you to be in a certain place at any given time like you can't just stand freely somewhere they want it to be organized and maybe it's a safety precaution but it's just annoying because they're always pushing you and i really don't like 
people putting their hands on me like that in public. So like they're always pushing you and I hate that so much, it irks my soul. So that's like the main thing I hate about it. But my favorite part is the confetti when it falls down. Like I'm just a child. So <laughs> if I see confetti, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and you know, when you come home, you have like pieces of confetti on you if it didn't all come off at the club. But I haven't been to live yet. I'm still waiting for an artist that I actually know to come there. Um, P Diddy was there two weeks ago, but I couldn't go because it was on a Sunday. And Sundays usually when like a lot of people come. Like I think uh, Meek Mill was either at Live or Story on Sunday. Yeah, I think he was at Live. But his tickets were a hundred dollars. I'm like, I'm not paying a hundred dollars to see Meek Mill. I'm sorry. And I'm from Philly, and I wouldn't pay for him for a hundred dollars. Like. I'll probably pay 30 like I did for French Montana. Like, I don't understand how he's charging more than French Montana. But anyway, um, what's it called? Yeah, so I'll, I'll see and check out some other places. They also have like salsa classes, like free salsa classes they offer during the week. So I'm gonna see if I can like try to go to one of those. And um, yeah, but like obviously in the meantime, gotta study gotta study because after every rotation we have to pass our shelves to get to the next rotation and obviously you want to do as well as you can on those shelves because it's leading up to the um, comprehensive exam that allows you to sit for your step two exam CK and CS so um, yeah it's all a balancing act and making sure that you don't expend all of your mental energy but, you know, I will definitely be posting videos of my future adventures. And until next time, deuces.